Congrats. Um, next week, we will have the pleasure of Jennifer Blue officiating for us for morning prayer, so we're excited for that. And then Father Christopher will be back on the 15th and the 29th. So we'll be looking ahead to those dates. This Wednesday, um, before we get to that, Tuesday is Book Club. So if you plan on joining Book Club or you want to be a part of that Book Club, they meet on Tuesday. On Wednesday at 6 o'clock, not 6.30, it says 6.30 in the bulletin, but it is 6 o'clock, there is a reception um, for Dick Bogus. At 7 o'clock, we will have a celebration of life for Dick here at Grace. So I'll be prepared for that. And then, Jennifer, do you have an announcement for us? I do, I have two. Can everyone hear me on the Yes, okay, great. Uh, my So I do have a special announcement, and the, um, the Moser Miller Dove family is going to help me with this. Now, I need your participation with this as well, so that we can do this right. Stand up or raise your hand if you know what Script Ohio is. Stay standing or keep your hand raised if you know what a sousaphone is. Stay standing or keep your hand raised if you will be playing the sousaphone in the Ohio State Alumni Band, Script Ohio, on Saturday, September 7th. And that would be <laughs> Thomas Palmer, our organist.
Lord Jesus Christ. Let us humbly confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Today's reading from Psalm 45 will be read responsively by whole verse. My heart is stirring with a noble song. Let me recite what I have fashioned for the king. My tongue shall be the pen of a skilled writer. You are the fairest of men, 
Grace flows from your lips because God has blessed you forever. Your throne, O God, endures forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. You love righteousness and hate iniquity. Therefore, God, your God has anointed you with the oil of gladness above your fellows. All your garments are fragrant with myrrh, aloes, and tesa, and the music of strings from ivory palaces make you glad. King's daughters stand among the ladies of the court. On your right hand is the queen, adorned with the gold and over. The first reading today is from Solomon, the second chapter. The voice of my beloved, look, he comes, leaping upon the mountains, bounding over the hills. My beloved is like a gazelle or a young stag. Look, there he stands behind our wall, gazing at the windows, looking through the lattice. My beloved speaks and says to me, Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. For now the winter is, <laughs> is past, the rain is over and gone. The flowers appear on the earth, the time of singing has come, and the voice of the turtle dove is heard in our land. The fig tree, fig tree puts forth its figs, and the vines are in blossom, they give forth fragrance. Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from James. Every generous act of giving with every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. In fulfillment of his own purpose, he gave us birth by the word of truth, so that we would become a kind of first fruits of his creatures. You must understand this, my beloved. Let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger, for your anger does not produce God's righteousness. Therefore, rid yourselves of all sordidness and rank growth of wickedness, and welcome with meekness the implanted word that has the power to save your souls. But be doers of the word, and not merely hearers who deceive themselves. For if any are hearers of the word and not doers, they are like those who look at themselves in a mirror. 
for they look at themselves and, on going away, immediately forget what they were like. But those who look into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and persevere, being not hearers who forget, but doers who act, they will be blessed in their doing. If any think they are religious and do not bridle their tongues, but deceive their hearts, their religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to care for orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself unstained by the world. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. When the Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around him, they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with defiled hands, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they thoroughly wash their hands, thus observing the tradition of the elders. And they do not eat anything from the market unless they wash it. And there are also many other traditions that they observe, the washing of cups, pots, and bronze kettles. So the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, Why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? He said to them, Isaiah prophesied rightly about you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far away from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrines. You abandon the commandment of God and hold to human tradition. Then he called the crowd again and said to them, Listen to me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside a person that going in can defile, but things that come out are what defile. For it is written, From the human heart that evil intentions come. Fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, folly. All these evil things come from within, and they defile a person. The Gospel of the Lord. Growing up, my mother always taught me one important lesson, and that was that you don't hate anybody. Now, that is very difficult for me 
being that I'm a very strong a person of very strong emotion. In that, when I'm happy, I'm very happy. When I'm sad, I crawl up in a corner and cry. When I'm angry, it turns red. I'm a person of very strong emotion. And looking at today's gospel reading, I had trouble kind of coming up with what does this all mean? And then it took me a second, but then um, I went up to, uh, I usually actually start kind of thinking about sermons um, in, of all places, the shower. So, of course, you know, I'm getting ready for my shower and I come out and I look in the mirror and then I stand there for a second and I go, is this truly the person I want to see? Furthermore, I look a little bit deeper and I say, is this the heart I want to see? In today's gospel reading, Jesus talks about all these evils that come from the heart. And it's very true. All these evils that he talks about, from lying and licentiousness to adultery, they all come from within. Nothing that can go into the body defiles us. It's what comes out of it. And that is where our true struggle is sometimes as humans. Sometimes we struggle with the with the evils that come from our heart, with the bad things that come from our heart. But we also know every single time that we're in here on Sunday mornings, when we have Eucharist, that we say uh, that God from no secrets are hid. We have to remember that there is no secrets hid from God. God knows our intentions whether we like it or not. And my mother taught me very early on not to hate anybody. But there has come a time where I think, you know, well, why don't I hate this person who does this evil deed? Why don't I hate the person who stole from me? Why don't I hate the person who caused over $10,000 worth of damage to my car simply because of who I was? But then I realized that's not the godly way of doing things, especially coming here and learning that love God, love your neighbor, change the world. If I had loved that person, would they have done the same thing? Maybe. But that doesn't actually mean that they would, have, they would have changed their actions. But then I know in my heart that my heart is resolved. There is no ill in my heart. And I'll be honest with you folks. The last couple of months, my heart's been ill. I've told you this. My heart's ill. I feel lost. And it's a true struggle. There are deeds in my heart that I can't, that are very difficult for me to talk about. Maybe I'm a little angry because certain people wanted me to get sober. Maybe I'm a little angry because I'm not where I want to be financially. Maybe I wish that, you know, hey, maybe I could have a better job. Maybe I could have a bigger house. Maybe I could have a better car. Maybe I could be that talented person I wanted to be. You know, if God hadn't hurt me with my heart, being the way that it was when I was younger, I was diagnosed with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. What that is, is that there's a large wall in my heart. So, I was angry because I couldn't play the one sport that I loved. I absolutely loved football. I wanted to be a football player. I pictured myself playing for the Cincinnati Bengals. I wanted to be a wide receiver for the Cincinnati Bengals, and I couldn't do it because of my heart. So I was angry. Maybe I could have been a better person. Maybe I could have made it to the NFL had my heart not been the way that it was. But let's flip the script. Maybe God made me, gave me a bigger heart for a reason. Maybe it's because I want to care a little more for my neighbor. Maybe it's because he gives me this for my strong emotions so that I'm able to feel what the other person is feeling. Um, it was funny, when I uh, had to supervise down at the pantry, I saw somebody who was upset. And I went beside them and I talked to them and asked them you know, what they were upset about. And they were able to bring that emotion back down. They were able to calm themselves down and get level. And that's a gift. 
being able to share that with somebody else and being able to share that emotion of, yes, I understand where you're coming from. And that's a gift that all of us have, is being able to move past our arcane emotions of being those people who get angry very quickly. In our Old Testament, or in our New Testament reading, excuse me, it talks about being slow to anger. That's very difficult for the human condition. I'll openly admit it. The human condition is for us to be very quick to anger. But in reality, it's easy to control. It takes time and remembering that God loves us, no exceptions. It takes time to understand, to treat every single person as God's beloved and not just that person on the street corner. It takes looking in the mirror and holding one up to yourself and saying, is this who I want to see? Am I the person that I want to be? Am I the best person I can possibly be? And then taking it one step further and going inside yourself, searching deep within your soul to the portions you don't want to see. I will tell you, there are portions of my heart that I don't want to see right now. There's anger, there's bitterness, but there's also that bigger part that God gave me, that bigger heart to be able to love my neighbor, to be able to care for somebody else, to be able to say, you know what, Tom, you got this. And that's what I want for all of you. Look deep within inside yourselves. And that would be my challenge for you this week. Look deep inside yourselves and ask, hold the mirror up and say, is this who I want to see? Are these the values that I live by? What are my values that I hold dearest to my heart? And stand firm by them. I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm not saying if you believe a certain type about, um, about different rights that you're not wrong. I'm not saying that you're right either. What I am saying is this, be slow to anger, be quick to love, and with that, we can share God's love within all of us, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Day by day, we bless you. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Lord, show us your love and mercy. In you, Lord, is our hope. 
Let us pray in the words our Savior Christ has taught us. Our Father, Lord of all power and might, the author and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of your name, increase in us true religion, nourish us with all goodness, and bring forth in us the fruit of good works. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, our governor, whose glory is in all the world. We commend this nation to thy merciful care, that, being guided by your providence, we may dwell secure in your peace. Grant to Joseph, the President of the United States, and to Mike, the Governor of this state, and to Jody, our Mayor, and to all in authority, wisdom and strength to know and to do your will. Fill them with the love of truth and righteousness and make them ever mindful of their calling to serve this people in your faith and fear. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, who created all peoples in your image, we thank you for the wonderful diversity of races and cultures in this world. Enrich our lives by ever-widening circles of fellowship, and show us your presence in those who differ most from us, until our knowledge of your love is made perfect in our love for all your children. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Merciful God, we remember before you all who suffer in mind, body, or spirit. Grant to each of them and us the constant awareness of your loving concern and healing power, and restore each of them and us to health and wholeness of life both now and forevermore. From our parish prayer list, we especially remember Michael Deemer, Zach Deemer, Ellen Gleason, Gabe Godwin, Brenda McGregor, and those we name now aloud or silently. All this we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore.